Hello YouTube and Patreon, this is Nathan P. Butler and this is my YouTube channel or Patreon depending on where you're looking at it. And uh, this is our project update for December of 2018. You can probably guess it's December because when else would I wear this garish thing? I kind of feel like there's maybe a couple days a year I can wear this legitimately and then otherwise it has to sit in the closet. So the uh, an elf I am not is now out of the closet and will be right Back in the closet very soon. Uh, I point that out because recently on one of the mini Q&A episodes, which is a new thing we'll talk about, I had somebody ask about how many Star Wars shirts I owned. And uh, this is one of them, but it's one you're only going to see around the holidays. And even then, God, it's ugly. Um, so we're doing a project update here, of course. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I say thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Of course, the Patreon, if you're not familiar with it, is over on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, of course, dot com slash Nathan P. Butler. It all gets run together as one word. And, of course, there are those three tiers over there. The first tier, which is basically a pledge of a dollar up to, what, four ninety nine, I suppose, uh, which is that first tier, which is the Travelers Through the Butler Universe. Those folks get a chance to get their name in the credits for episodes like these, uh, while there's still a manageable number, which seems to be the case for the foreseeable future, I'll be calling out those people and saying thank you here actually in these Project Update episodes. And eventually, when I put together the second edition of my book, A Saga on Home Video, a fan's guide to U.S. Star Wars home video releases, that new color edition that's expanded that you'll see in the next two to three years, give or take, maybe, uh, those folks will get a special place on the Patreon thanks page as well. Then, of course, those pledges from $5 up to $9.99 are the denizens of the Learniverse. Those folks get access to the two commentaries per month at least for mainly episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars. So little MP3s you can download and listen to as you watch episodes of The Clone Wars right along with me uh, in chronological order. We'll talk about what just got released here in just a moment. Uh, I do sometimes put in other commentaries. I'm trying very hard uh, sometime before my Christmas break semester break, holiday, whatever you want to call it, is over um, to actually be able to put together some more episodes of commentaries for Forces of Destiny to wrap up that series. Just haven't had a chance to do that just yet. Still recording pretty late at night, hence the lighting, but I figure we'll just go for the lighting here. Why not just, you know, buy into the fact that it's going to be a little bit more cozy lighting uh, from time to time. Uh, beyond that, of course, we then have the $10 and up tier. Those are the folks who are known as the nobility of the Burton Learniverse, and they have access not only to the stuff in the tiers beneath, of course, but also to an exclusive Q&A each month. And some months we have questions, some months we don't. On the months that we don't, I'm now taken to sort of creating topics to talk about each time so that we can still have episodes month to month to month. Uh, last month was one of those months where we didn't have one, so we talked about an educational topic. This month, now, we definitely do have some questions coming in from actually a new Patreon supporter, uh, who is also someone that I know from other places, and uh, we'll be using that and any more questions that get submitted. So, just to kick it all off here, thank you very much to all the Patreon supporters. Those include, from the Travelers of the Butt Learniverse, Ben P. Stein, Martin Dahl, Austin Pierce, Jeremiah Mustard, and S.W. Chris. From the denizens of the Butt Learniverse, Jeff Ellis, Joey Zitzman, Stephen M., Sam Howard, Chris Morgan, Robert Medina, Bobby Craig, and Jason Hunt. Then, of course, for the nobility of the Butt Learniverse, which is where our newcomer comes in, we have Brian Snook, Benjamin Handelman, Andrew Bettis, Aaron Melzack, Gary Sherwood, and Jonathan Confer, also known as Senator Confer, if you happen to check out some of the questions he asks and whatnot in the videos on YouTube, like the mini Q&A episodes and so forth. A fellow chronology enthusiast uh, who has decided to uh, jump on to the Patreon thing, which is awesome, and uh, is actually the one who has so far submitted questions for our next Q&A. So the January Q&A will have his questions and, again, any other ones that happen to be asked in the collection thread by those nobility of the butt learniverse. So make sure if you have questions you want to get answered and you're in that top tier, make sure you drop by. Drop in a question, drop in a comment, whatever you want to put in there, and then uh, I'll have a chance to respond to it in the Q&A next time. I keep moving my hands, but I realize that with this new setup, you can't actually see the hands. So you just see me kind of like having my shoulders shift or something. Um, so uh, to dive in here, before we get into anything else, one thing I did want to point out, because I don't know that there's really a need to address it otherwise. I've already addressed it uh, briefly on the Star Wars Timeline Gold's Facebook page. Yes, of course, the Star Wars Timeline Gold is no longer active. Um, apparently, an anti-Disney, pro-Legends, pro-EU, whatever you want to call it, uh, not a Brexit-related thing, not that kind of EU thing, uh, 
website, blog, stumbled upon my video from back in March. So nine months ago, as of the time I'm recording this, uh, on December 27th, um, stumbled upon that blog post where I explained why the Star Wars Timeline Gold was ending and went into the different reasons, the having a baby, the uh, continuity stuff becoming very frustrating, the chronology stuff, the vagueness becoming very frustrating for timeliners, and then the toxic fandom aspect of things. And used that in a recent article, which they clickbaitily, to create a new word here, a neologism, uh, they clickbaitily entitled, Star Wars Writer Trashes Lucasfilm Story Group. Um, which, to some degree, is a valid interpretation, but it falls into the Lucas Wallencheck thing, as I call it, uh, from Sequest DSV. The easiest way to lie is to tell the truth except the part that really matters. So just to clarify for those who happen to see that article uh, out there and see that the video is embedded in it, but perhaps take the time to read the article but not view the video. Um, that video is particularly harsh, and it's on this channel, it's particularly harsh on issues that the story group continues to have when it comes to uh, continuity, of the new stories, uh, chr chronological placement of new stories, particularly in the idea of keeping things extremely vague. Um, uh, like, for instance, the new Age of Republic story for Qui-Gon. When the hell does that take place? Sometime when Obi-Wan's with Qui-Gon and sometime before Phantom Menace. Great. Didn't help me at all. Um, or wouldn't have helped me if I was still doing the timeline. Uh, some of the issues with uh, continuity, as I mentioned, uh, the toxic fan of stuff, all that kind of stuff all kind of rolled into one. But this particular post, this particular blog, decided to take that as a Star Wars writer blasting the story group as a group. Um, so a couple things. One, and presumably thinking that I am, I guess, in the anti-Disney camp all of a sudden. So to clarify, uh, number one, I am still a fan of both the Legends continuity and the Disney's new story group canon continuity, whatever you want to call it, um, as I'm also a fan of Infinity's A New Hope, Infinity's The Empire Strikes Back, Infinity's Return of the Jedi, The Star Wars. Basically, most continuities of Star Wars I'm a fan of, with the exception of some of the weirder stuff that we got with some of the issues of Star Wars Tales before Jeremy Barlow came in and changed the approach to the series. Um, I, ironically, I guess, with the, the issue that my story was in. Um, so... No, I'm not anti-Disney. I'm very much against the approach that's being taken right now with the poor continuity checking, um, the really kind of, of, of haphazard way it seems to be going with no actual plan in sight, no grand plan, uh, the fact that you do have stories that are so chronologically vague that it's very difficult to place them, if at all, that sort of thing. Um, but that is different than not being a fan of it or being against Disney, modern Star Wars, story group canon, whatever. It's simply that I just am not someone uh, who likes the vagueness and whatnot. And those are issues. As I said before, I think of myself as sort of the loyal opposition in the sense that, you know, if you love something greatly, you want to step in and point out the flaws so that it can get better and try to point them in the right direction. It's kind of like when you've got someone who is a drug addict and you stage an intervention. It's not that you hate the person, otherwise you wouldn't be doing the intervention. You love them, you want to help them, you're going to put them through hell to get them there if necessary because it's sort of a tough love approach. The loyal opposition is essentially that when it comes to anything else. Uh, it's a term used all the way back in my Chrono Radio days, which Jeremy Barlow referred to um, as we were talking about whether or not to have me write for Tales. And I bring that up a couple of times because that is the other thing that ties into this. The title, again, clickbaitily written, to use another phrase, um, was... Star Wars writer trashes Lucasfilm story group. Um, that really is kind of misleading, at least I think so. Um, technically, it's true. Did I write for Star Wars? Yes. I wrote for Star Wars Tales once. A 14-page story in one issue, one trade paperback, one comic pack. I assisted on the Essential Atlas in a minor way with the dated battle map dates and stuff like that. Um, and I had a few times to sort of glance against continuity in the past. But to say Star Wars writer trashes Lucasfilm story group, it implies to anyone who sees that headline, I think at least, that it's going to be someone who is currently involved and has worked under the story group 
sort of dishing on inside scoop and, and, and trashing what's going on um, with some type of inside information, something that isn't somebody who hasn't written for the saga except for one major time, and it's a minor time, just major compared to the other things that I did. Um, and certainly not something that was, what, going on 15 years ago now, a decade and a half ago now, well before there was a story group, well before the reboot, well before the Disney buyout, and well before the license switched away from Dark Horse to Marvel. I mean, lots of things have changed since then. It just seems like it is somewhat of, to me, a, a misleading headline. Not technically false in the sense of, of Star Wars writer, but certainly misleading. It'd be like, uh, like I've got a few students um, who now play for the NFL, uh, some former students who now play for the NFL. If one of them decided after their first year, and they're not really playing very much, which a couple of them aren't really playing all that much, um, that they decide, you know what? I don't think this is actually for me. I want to go back to school and study psychology. And... Ten years down the line, this psychologist now um, expresses an opinion in public about the mental state of, let's say, a president. Then the headline could theoretically read and still be accurate, NFL player trashes president's mental state or whatever. Um, was this person an NFL player? At one point, sure but not in a long time, and that has no relation to what he'd be talking about there, just as what I was talking about had no relation to me writing for Tales years ago. It was all about what was happening now in relation to trying to be a Star Wars chronology enthusiast, timeline, or whatever you want to call our particular little subgenre of fandom. So to me, that was a little bit disingenuous. Uh, there was some factual errors within the article, like uh, that talking about uh, there are continuity errors with the marriage of Poe Dameron. That'd be interesting, given the fact that Poe Dameron isn't a married character and hasn't been a married character. There were issues with the wedding as presented in the comic Poe Dameron that was reflected in another book, Escape from Vodrin, the incredible farting wedding stuff, but not a wedding of Poe. So that seems to be um, poorly worded, at least. Um, I'm not sure that Trash's story group would be the thing. Trash's the current approach, tears into the current approach, sure. But the story group themselves, I tend to think of as good people. Um, Pablo Hidalgo and Leland Chi I've had a chance to converse with a few times over the years, more Leland than Pablo, and they are decent people. These are people who love Star Wars and have a lot of fun with it. I just don't think the current approach is working well. But trashing the story group sounds as though it's a personal attack or it's somehow tearing into the people. It's not the people, it's the approach. Um, no more than when I went off on what was happening with Dark Horse's issues back in around 2003, 2004, uh, on Chrono Radio that it had anything to do with Randy Stradley himself as a person, uh, Jeremy Barlow himself as a person, and so on. Um, so, and a little bit misleading. And I do find it incredibly ironic that you have a person from a group called the New Republic Historical Office, I think the same person that I'm thinking of, um, who is all like, oh, no, I, I've had my disagreements with him in the past, but he's right on the money with this and such. Yes, because now I'm saying something that you like. But this is the same group, and I think the same person who was the impetus in 2016 for that episode of my vlog known as uh, Intellectual Honesty and Lack Thereof, um, where I specifically talked about how these people were calling me a, what, a, a paid Disney advocate or something, like Disney threatened me with pulling some type of money or some type of support or access in order to convince me to tell people that you could like whatever the hell you want, and still... In that article back then, and in the article this time, mischaracterized what I said at the time as saying that anyone who liked uh, Legends was being intellectually dishonest. No, asshats, I'll say it again. It's not intellectually dishonest to say that you like what you like. That's personal opinion. It's also not intellectually dishonest or somehow a crime against fandom to like one or the other, or both, or none, or whatever. Again, personal opinion. However, those who would go out and say that Legends is the official, canonical, main timeline of Star Wars now, and that the Disney canon is fan fiction, or not real as much so as Legends, or more so than Legends, or isn't official Star Wars at this point, that is being intellectually dishonest, because fans don't get to make that decision. 
the copyright holder gets to make that decision because they're the ones actually producing things. They're the ones actually driving the creation of the saga. They're the ones driving uh, the product line at this point, and they get to decide. And Disney owns it, has delegated that power to the story group, and the story group has apparently made that decision to stick with this new continuity, not go back to Legends. This is what Star Wars is now, at least in terms of what they are focusing on and what is the primary continuity for Star Wars. Um, so yes, to to argue facts that are actually fake news, fake news, yeah, that is intellectually dishonest. But I never said that liking uh, Legends or holding on to Legends and not liking the Disney stuff was intellectually dishonest, because that would be idiotic. Anyway, so just wanted to point that out. For those of you who are uh, looking for it, again, I just are already named the article. You're welcome to check it out. Um, uh, from a factual standpoint, most of it I don't disagree with. I think the characterization is off, and I certainly uh, don't want to be lumped into an anti-Disney crowd because I very much enjoy the new continuity. I just think they could do a hell of a lot better than having me enjoy the TV shows and the films and kind of being meh about everything else. Uh, but if you're interested in that video where I talk about why the timeline ended and those specific issues, you will find it here on the channel. Um, and if you're looking for that uh, intellectual honesty vlog, just search this channel for intellectual honesty and you will find that vlog, which is the first time that that particular group that was uh, quoted within the article um, in at length with their thoughts about my thoughts um, decided to come after me for daring to have an opinion that was different than their own. Um, okay, so that said, uh, I did want to get that out there so I don't have to deal with it anywhere else. Um, I said things a little bit more intelligently. <laughs> in my uh, response uh, post over on uh, the Star Wars Timeline Gold's Facebook page, facebook.com slash SWTimelineGold, if you care. I'm not sure how long that page is going to be around, by the way. So if you are on that page, you may want to make the jump over to the Star Wars Beyond the Films podcast page, which is facebook.com slash SWBeyondFilms. Um, we do have a Beyonders Who Ponder group on there that you can basically uh, uh, request to join. And it gives us a little bit more control over... Um, being able to have discussions without random people jumping in and throwing bombs and acting like trolls. Um, so, you know, more than welcome to pop on there as well. But I'm not sure how long the timelines page is going to last because right now it's not really doing anything other than reposting the stuff that I release, like links to the YouTube videos. And if you want the YouTube stuff, you can just subscribe on here, right? Ah, well, it's, it's been a long, long day. Um, so, that said, what else did we get this month? Well, on Patreon, again, patreon.com slash Nathan P. Butler, we got two new audio commentaries. Those were the two-parter for the Clone Wars, The Zillow Beast and The Zillow Beast Strikes Back, that Godzilla wannabe type storyline. So two new audio commentaries for those who are among the nobility or denizens of the Butler universe. And then for those who are among the nobility, we had the newest of our uh, Q&A videos. Again, no questions this time, so I built off the theme from the previous episode, which is to talk about if there were any specific um, educational philosophies, mindsets, ideas that I tend to follow, which got a little bit more in-depth than I actually expected it to. So if you happen to be a parent, you might find that particularly interesting. In terms of podcasts, no new episodes with Michael Morris for Cloud City Casino still. We just need to have a chance to actually get together and record, figure out what we're going to record about, especially now that I am just done uh, with Battlefront 2 at this point, because um, I'm not spending crystals or grinding like crazy to get access to either of the two new characters, which are the primary reason to go back to it at all. So that's gone from the hard drive at this point, which means no live streams or anything like that at all at this point. Um, but uh, we will be getting together sometime soon, hopefully, to talk about that, talk about some other new releases, some other new news and things like that, uh, especially talking about how the First Order and the Resistance now work their way into the X-Wing 2nd Edition and all that as separate factions. Um, but there was a new episode recently of Star Wars Beyond the Films, which is the other podcast that I do, that one with Mark Herleman. Uh, this was episode number 238 called Tuned for Feedback. So we did our Thrawn Alliances episode um, shortly before the last of these update videos. And then we had a couple of uh, in-depth emails asking a few questions each. And we had an iTunes review we wanted to respond to. This is the iTunes review that referred to us as right-wing stooges, which was hilarious given that we'd also been called libtards after our coverage of Aftermath. So we're apparently doing something right by pissing off both ends of the political spectrum by not siding with either side. Remember, in today's political climate, if you don't side with one side, you are assumed to be a partisan from the other side. Um, so it made for some interesting uh, discussion there. It's basically based on some 
a review that was based on the previous feedback episode, so it kind of keeps the the Star Wars in context of the real world kind of stuff going a little bit. Um, our next episodes, which are not released yet, not recorded yet, are going to be our year in review episodes. There'll be at least three of them. Usually it's three or four. There'll be one for the books, one for the comics, and then typically there's either one for movies and TV and then one for the other stuff like the games, or those two get combined. I'm not really sure how that's going to work this year. Um, there doesn't seem to be enough really to require it to be two episodes, so we could probably do it as three. It just depends on uh, the length that we wind up running into for these year in review episodes. Sometimes the year in review winds up taking us a couple of months into the year. And while that's okay, it's also sucking up a lot of the, the oxygen in the room for the show. Uh, but you can find that, of course, over at StarWarsReport.com. Again, it's episode 238 of Star Wars Beyond the Films. I would also note just something to look forward to. Um, it's not out yet. But the next episode of Star Wars Action News, I am assuming, is going to be their year in review episode. And I just recently, actually the same day as recording the feedback episode for Star Wars Beyond the Films with Mark, I recorded with Brock from Star Wars Action News for a segment of year in review in publishing that should be showing up in that year in review episode. I'm not sure when it'll be released, um, but presumably sometime within about the next month or so, because it's a year in review. And finally, it's the YouTube stuff. Um, at this point, um, it's been about a month since the last of the uh, project updates. That was on November 28th, so we're just shy of, I think, a day as of the time I'm recording this. Um, since that time, I've started a new series on YouTube, which are the mini Q&A episodes. Instead of only doing Q&A episodes through the vlog, where I gather a ton of questions at once, and it'd be this giant episode uh, with all kinds of stuff kind of crammed into it that would take a long time to record and a long time to edit. Um, I have instead gotten into this habit now of doing these mini Q&A episodes, which are sometimes called mini Qs by accident. Uh, blame the DBQ project if you're a teacher. Um, but basically what they are are quick little 20 minute or so Q&A episodes where I originally just asked for questions and recorded six episodes, all of which are out now uh, since the last episode or the last uh, project update. Um, that have a few questions at a time off of this thread where I asked people for questions, this video where I asked people for questions. I took those questions from the comments and made the first six. Uh, I have since recorded, I want to say it's another four or five, based on the comments from the first five or so of those mini Q&As and their comment sections. Uh, those still need to be edited. They will be coming out soon. But at this point, you've already got six of those to check out. And that's kind of the point, to try to do these mini Q&A episodes quickly in a slightly different format so they can come out more rapidly and give you more content more frequently without substantially increasing the workload on my end to the point where it's difficult to actually get them done. So you can check those out. Uh, we also, of course, have plenty of new Fantasy Flight Games type reviews. Um, we took a look at the Emperor Palpatine and the Imperial Royal Guard expansion packs, uh, the uh, unit packs, for Legion. So that's the Emperor Palpatine Commander Expansion and the Imperial Royal Guards Unit Expansion. I always have trouble getting through those full names. Um, both of those videos are available on the channel. Very soon I'll have ones for the Wookiee Warriors and for Chewbacca. They both showed up in the mail yesterday. I just need to put them together and get a recording done. So you'll see that within the next month. We also saw the next wave of X-Wing stuff just come out. So this month... We had videos on the newest expansions released for X-Wing 2nd Edition. Those are the Mining Guild TIE Fighter, which is brand new. The uh, RZ-2 A-Wing for the Resistance, which is also new. And then the reissues or re-releases under the 2nd Edition for the First Order TIE Fighter, the regular one, and the T-70 X-Wing as well. Uh, I have recorded footage uh, and uh, an overview, basically, of the conversion kits for both the First Order and the Resistance. Both of those still need to be edited. They'll be out within the next month as well. They'll probably actually be out before those next mini Q&As, or at least between maybe the first and second one. There were also four new episodes of my Nate's Favorite Deck Building Game series. Uh, they were all for different games, though. We did a third update for Star Realms. It took a quick look at the Legion Supplies box and some new promo cards. We took a look at uh, Ascension Deliverance, we took a look at Marvel Legendary Ant-Man and Shards of Infinity Relics of the Future. So new episodes for each of those little sub-series within Nate's favorite deck building games. Ascension, Star Realm, Shards of Infinity, and Legendary. Specifically Marvel Legendary this time because there are some other Legendary games out there. 
Um, also, as a special request, I did a quick look at the Star Wars Smuggler's Guide Deluxe Edition book with its special, you know, electronic case where you turn the little thing and it makes the sounds as it opens and everything does and gives you that in-universe document and so forth from Epic Inc. this time. Uh, that $100 set to let people know kind of whether it's worth the money and what's actually in it if you're curious about it. Uh, did that as well as a special request to someone who actually posted a question about that on one of the mini Q&As. It wasn't really something to look at in the mini Q&A, so I was like, okay, well, I'll just do a separate video for it, and we took a look at that. Now, you notice no new episodes of from the Star Wars Home Video Library are on that list of new stuff released in the, net in the last month. Uh, I'm in the process right now of doing research on multiple items. I've got a gigantic item or group of items that make up one collective item that we had to clear out space in our living room for to even store. Um, that is one that we'll be covering very soon, along with a special uh, 20th Century Fox item that uses Star Wars in part of it, but isn't specifically heavily focused on Star Wars. Uh, we've got an item from China, as the president might say. Um, we've got a product from Italy we'll be taking a look at. we got a couple of unusual uh, other releases of Solo coming out of the UK that I hadn't actually heard about that gives us a really kind of weird twist on one of the dynamics we see in the American home video market, kind of flipped on its head. Should be interesting to see. Uh, and a little bit more as well, before we even get into any episodes on the Willow stuff, which I may hold off on until the new release of Willow comes out in the near future. So episodes of those are coming up. I just have to figure out exactly, one, how to frame it. You know, do I sit further back so I can hold stuff up? Or do I stand up while I do it now? Do I move the camera back where it's on a tripod instead of sitting on the desk? Got to figure out exactly how that's going to work. I'm um, not a big fan of the lighting because I feel love it makes me look really, really red. Or it's just the fact that I'm wearing this garish t-shirt that makes me look really red. Um, but uh, those will be coming soon. I just got to figure out exactly how I want to record that. And I need to plug up my region-free DVD player and my uh, VCR to actually go in, my VHS player, uh, to actually go in and view some of the stuff to make sure I know exactly what I'm looking at to be able to give you detail uh, in depth when I do those episodes. I don't want to just look at the packaging if I can help it. I want to actually be able to watch whatever it is and give you some specifics on what you get in those particular items. Um, but we're talking about some older items. Even an old screener for Ewoks Caravan of Courage to go along with the Battle for Indoor screener that I showed you guys a while back. So anyway, those are coming soon. Um, none recorded yet. I'm still in the research process, but I'm hoping to get those out or at least some of them before the next of these monthly updates come around. So starting off the new year with some new content here. And that should pretty much do it. Uh, took a little bit of time here talking about that whole article thing, but I want to make sure that that's at least clarified without having to do a whole separate video on the thing. It doesn't really deserve that much of a focus because um, there's not that much to quibble about. Um, but did go ahead and uh, include that here for you. And then as far as projects go, it's mainly YouTube podcast and Patreon this time around. I uh, haven't had a chance to take more pictures for the book yet, but I plan to do some more of that while we're on our semester break. And then it's back diving headfirst into the semester and uh, the trials and travails of the second semester of senior year for a lot of my students. So this should make for an interesting uh, beginning to 2019. With that, though, thank you for watching. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for your support on Patreon for those of you who are Patreon supporters. And I will catch you in a month for another update. Hopefully, with a shirt that doesn't quite leave me looking quite so red.